It's map 152. We're going to look at section 3.1, uh, part 2, the second part of 3.1. And we have been um, doing integration by parts, right? So we've basically been doing this. Now, what we have been doing, though, is the indefinite integral, right? Not the definite integral. We haven't um, evaluated anything. And that's what we want to start to do is actually evaluate. So if I was doing this interval from A to B, what's going to happen is UV runs from A to B as well. We evaluate it from A to B. And this interval goes from A to B. And then we can plug in the numbers just like we always do with integrals and work it on out from there. So here's an example we're going to take a peek at. So we want to find the area between uh, y equal inverse tangent x and the x-axis uh, from 0 to 1. Okay, so let's, you could graph that in Desmos or something like that, but you'll know that this shape looks like this, 0 to 1. Um, there's that inverse tangent, and we're looking for that area right there. So pretty straightforward. We could set it up from 0 to 1, inverse tangent. And then now when I go to, uh, to do this, I'm going to have to use uh, integration by parts in order to do this. And I have an inverse, inverse trig function. So I'm going to let u be that. So u is that. And then uh, dv is 1 dx. So just dx. And so when I go to find those other pieces, uh, the integral of inverse tangent, if you don't know it, look it up. Um, but it is 1 over x squared plus 1 dx, and the integral, uh, I'm sorry, yeah, the integral of dx is just x. So now we have our pieces. We have u and v. So this is going to be uh, u times v, so x inverse tangent of x, and that's evaluated from 0 to 1, minus the integral of v du, which is x, uh, x squared plus 1, dx. Okay, great. So we have this part, which we can evaluate just kind of at the end, let's mess with this integral right now, knowing that we're going to end up subtracting it. So if I'm going to do this integral, I'm going to do a substitution. Yeah. So u could be x squared plus 1. Notice that du would be uh, 2x dx. And I don't have a 2, so I could think of 1 half du as x dx. And so when I substitute into here, I'm going to have the integral, oops, that's from 0 to 1, but I'll worry about that later. Integral from 0 to 1 of, notice like the x dx is taken care of here, so 1 half, and then it's just 1 over u. du. And uh, I can bring that 1 half out because it's a constant. And I know that the integral of 1 over u is natural log. So this would be one half natural log of u, but use x squared plus one. So one half natural log of x squared plus one. So this is that. So if I bring the whole thing down, I've got x times arctan zero to one minus this integral. And then I can evaluate that on out, and that's going to end up being pi over 4 minus 1 half natural log of 2. There's the exact answer. We're on our way. So again, it's everything we've been doing so far, but just with uh, adding some evaluation at the end to give us our, our definite uh, integral. All right. So we have algebraic and exponential. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you be the algebraic piece. Just x. I'm, I can pull the 2 out of here, right? Think of it as this. dv would be e to the negative x. So the derivative here is just uh, dx. And the integral of this, right, in order to get from here to here, I've got to go, you can get there with substitution or maybe kind of put it together in your head, but it is that. Okay, so now I have these pieces. So this is equal to uh, u times v, negative x times e to the negative x. And that's going to run from 0 to 1. Oh, it's 2 times that whole thing. I almost forgot my 2. Minus the integral 
of V D U. So this cool. And uh, let me go on my way here. I could pull this negative out of here, but I don't have to. Like I know that the the integral of this is negative that. So the integral of negative that would be positive this. So this will be. Again, that's also from zero to one. I keep forgetting to write that. That's not modeling what I want to model. You should, uh, you should do that. And I've got this. It's all times two. You can do it, do it however you want to evaluate that. Since that's the same range, you could put those together as well. But this is going to end up being, uh, let's see, two. That goes into there. So I've got two of these. Distribute that two into there. You can leave it like that. You could write it as that. So evaluating zero to pi over two, and we have an algebraic piece and we have a trig piece. So I'm gonna do the algebraic piece first and know that this is that. Uh, let's see, du then would be dx. V would be the antiderivative of cosine. So cosine comes from sine, so this would be sine x. So let me get my substitution in here. x times sine x, 0 to pi over 2, minus uh, v du. So integral, I'm going to remember this time, <laughs> sine x dx. So far, so good. So this is minus. Uh, let's see, the derivative of... I'm sorry, the integral of sine is negative cosine. So this would be minus negative cosine, so plus cosine from 0 to pi over 2. And then I can plug in my values to evaluate that. This 0 helps me a lot. I'm going to end up with pi over 2 minus 1. So remember, we're doing all the same stuff we we're doing for, but we also have one more piece to keep track of, and that's the evaluating at the end. Um, careful notation, careful writing is going to help you a lot. I'm not going to do this one whole this whole one, but I want to give you a little hint on a problem that looks like this. So looking at this, it's kind of a uh, of a pain, but one of the things that you can notice is um, natural log of something to a power can be rewritten as that, right? And then we can take the two out of there. That's going to be a lot easier to deal with. When this just less work and it's just a nice little clever thing to do all right um i just want to you to take the time right now to do the rest of these problems in 3.1 feel really super comfortable about them i do want to point out one thing uh in in your text and that's you know if you look over at the table of contents in your text down below there's key equations key concepts and review exercises for each chapter so if i'm looking at you know chapter two right now if I look at key equations, I just want you to notice it has this whole list of all these relationships that we've been working on. Um, and same with three. So these are really good places to kind of go and look for information. The other thing I'm gonna uh, recommend that you do is get a list of derivatives and integrals that are just common. And if you don't have things that you don't have memorized, like keep it there so you can, you can look things up. It's okay to look things up. All right. Hey, message me with any questions you have. Post them in the forum. Good luck.